Okay, I'll call the meeting in order. Benny's Select Board, Monday, September 24th, 2012. Time now, 6 p.m. And Jim, can I ask you to lead us to pledge allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Thank you, Jim. Okay, the next item on the agenda are the minutes from September 10th. Everybody should have received them in your email. Do I move they be accepted as printed? I have a motion. Second. And second. Any discussion on the minutes for September 10th? Very well done. Was Very not well an easy done. Job. <laughs> if not, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Seven. Okay, next item on the agenda are warrants. And we'll start with Chris. No, sir. Justin? No. Jim? Good. Jason? Good. Greg? Sharon? Nothing. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Page one, Stuart. Uh, I think I know the answer, but I want to make it public. Bass Hatfield Construction Pedestrian Bridge, 45000 bucks. Yeah, that's, uh, it may be the final payment, uh, or there might be some punch list. That's the uh, footbridge. Uh, the TSI means Tropical Storm Irene. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'll look to the end and maybe not if that's the final payment, but uh, we're close to the end. The bridge is open. Uh, if you haven't been down to it, it's really quite pretty. So for cash flow, we take this and send it to our insurance company. Is that what happens? Uh, we've received all, already. We've received prepayments from the insurance company, and this is all eligible for reimbursement at 90 percent. Okay. 95 percent. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. That was Dan Monks. Okay. Uh, any citizens out there tonight would like to address the select board on any item that is not on our agenda? Okay, seems pretty quiet. Okay, the next item on the agenda, and we don't have a time specified, but we have here warned a public hearing land use regulation amendment. So, are there any citizens that want to come forward and talk about, this is your chance to talk to the select board about your feelings on the piece of uh, property, but actually the whole, the whole amendment that uh, that was proposed by the planning commission for us to look at. Michael, come come, come to the mic. And for those who don't know you, please identify yourself. Mike Bethel. Um, first, I want to just say uh, I talked to Mr. Gladstone earlier today, and he wished uh, he could be here, but he couldn't. It's a three-hour ride up and a three-hour ride back. But all of the things that he said before, he, you know, he would like to bring business to Bennington. He would like to work with the select board to change the piece of property to commercial, industrial, and all the things that he presented before. And I am not a paid spokesman for a Gladstone development. That's very clear, I hope. But uh, we have gotten to know each other over the umpteen years to try to change his property, him and his father. And uh, I back it 100%. Um, I would also like to say that it, it, it really is time to stop the rhetoric and the talk and to start trying to move our economy in whatever direction when people want to come here. Uh, Jason brought up last time about the, the whole commercial, industrial, but that's not a negative in my mind either because if you have commercial, industrial in some parts of your town, it means businesses could come in, make the product, and sell it from the same building. Make it in the back and sell it out the front. So uh, I don't think that's a negative. Uh, we had a spokesman here a few days ago, a Mr. Mullen, and he originally was here 20 years ago, I guess, when uh, to fight the original Walmart. And uh, I was surprised that out of all the people that they could get, they would find somebody like Mr. Mullen that um, was kind of saying old, old 20-year-old stuff, if you know what I mean. I think, though, he corrected himself by saying that was old stuff, and that was not necessarily how he felt today if he was going through that. He made that pretty clear. Well, I wish he would make it more clear the next time he comes up that we need growth, and uh, we do have a, f a strong foundation. But any house can have a foundation. If you don't start building upon it, um, you're really not getting anything done. So I wish you would uh, change Johnson Control to commercial industrial, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else like to speak on this? Got last select board members. Uh, Stuart passed us uh, a letter from a citizen today, <coughs> reference uh, the hearing we're having today. Has everybody had a chance to read that? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
don't need to comment on it, but I just want to make sure everybody's informed. Uh, just so the public knows, uh, we received a letter from uh, uh, the owners of Eddington House in North Bennington, uh, Patty Eddington, and just listed her feelings on how that place should be zoned. Okay, any other folks? Okay, Jason. Uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, what I want to say tonight, I'm going to be try to I'm going to try to be very brief. Uh, first, we had a long enough. Let meeting. me ask something though. Before we take deliberation, Stuart, do I need to close the public hearing, or can we deliberate in the public hearing? Uh, you can deliberate during the public hearing, but uh, it leaves it open for additional public comment okay. after that. I'll ask one more time. Anybody out in the public that wants to uh, comment on this? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. I'll second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, go ahead, Jason. Well, like I was starting to say, Joe, um, I think most of us have talked about this at quite a bit of length over the last few years, so I'm going to be brief. We talked about it at length two weeks ago. Um, my feelings really haven't changed. I've thought about this a lot and probably received more comments on this particular issue uh, than I've received on and most of the others we've, we've considered over the years. Uh, you know, with all due respect to Mike Bethel, uh, you know, there's you know, there's one comment I would agree with. He says, we, you know, we have to do what we need to do to spur growth. And in my opinion, I think leaving that property as industrial does a good thing to spur growth. I don't like the report and the idea that mixes commercial and industrial throughout a wide swath of uh, Route 67, right up in through Northside Drive. I think that's got the potential to uh, frankly go the other direction and be an unmitigated disaster over the next several decades. My thought is, is that it ought to be industrial and I'd like to make a motion for the board to consider to do the following. I'd like to make a motion that recognizes the efforts of the Planning Commission in doing what we asked them to do. The select board gave them a, a task to perform and they've done it. So I would like to recognize them for their effort. The second part of the motion is to leave this land in the industrial zone. I do think that over time that's the best and highest use to the land. There is other commercial space that can be developed. There is other pre-built commercial space that's available. I do think the risk of letting something run unfettered in that part of town brings a humongous risk to two particular parts of town, that being Northside Drive and the Main Street Historic Business section, uh, where business for many people is tenuous at best today, and we need to protect that. But that being said, I think, uh, and I've said this before, and I'd be remiss in not saying it tonight, that if not pressed, I could do it very easily. I, I could articulate commercial development that makes sense on the Johnson Controls parcel, and I could probably, uh, because I don't think this is limited to Johnson Controls, and I don't think, uh, you know, as much as this has been directed at the Gladstone parcel, there's a bigger picture to be looked at here in terms of future economic development. The third part of the motion is, is that I want this board to direct the town manager to begin work immediately on a, on a new policy that will be vetted by the select board regarding variances uh, to how any piece of property is zoned so that we can consider it for changes. And the purpose for that is, uh, although Mr. Gladstone has uh, disagreed with me on this point in previous meetings, and I think Mr. Bethel has probably disagreed with me as well, uh, I firmly believe, and I've been told by others, including other developers, uh, that it isn't as big a hindrance to develop that property commercially in a way that it, if he would, for example, to use the Gladstone property as an example, because that's really what we've talked about at length for the last five years, if he would come to us with his plan of how it was going to be developed, he would be afforded a full and fair hearing by this board as to how we would vary the zoning for such a request. That would allow this board in concert through a public hearing where various stakeholders, whether it's downtown, whether it's Northside Drive, whether it's neighboring properties, whatever the case may be, would have the opportunity to come before us, talk about the plan, and frankly, this board could then condition 
such a plan in a way that it, we could feel comfortable that it didn't hurt or hinder Northside Drive or downtown. In fact, I think we could probably do it in a way that it would complement Northside Drive and downtown and uh, be better for, for lack of a better term, the entire apple instead of one small slice of the apple. So that being said, my motion is first to recognize the report of the Planning Commission and thank the Planning Commission for their work. Secondly, leave the parcel zoned as industrial as it is today. And third, direct the town manager post haste to bring a proposed policy to this board for consideration that would allow us a procedure to pursue variances for developers that came to us for plans that didn't conform with, con with uh, current zoning designations. My, uh, I'm going to use the chairman's prerogative. I'm going to speak on this. Um, everybody, I hope, knows or many know that uh, I was one of the proponents of changing the zoning of that particular parcel. Um, if the vote was to do that tonight, that vote, I'm sure, would fail, and we'd be back right back where we always are. I'm going to second Jason's motion for the following reasons. It leaves it open. I like the third part. First of all, I like thanking the, the Planning Commission for the hard work that they went back to, to do for us. But I see the part of the policy that we're asking our town manager to come up with with his staff. That's going to leave all the parcels that we have in there open for discussion for anyone who is a landowner who feels they want something to go uh, on that parcel. Uh, it gets it away in my mind's eye from one developer, one piece of land that we've been arguing with over years um, on that thing. Uh, last week, Mr. Gladstone uh, brought us a concept of what could go in there. And I appreciate the effort he put in there. I think, though, this policy that we're asking the town manager to develop for us, um, if names and commitments from retailers, for example, were on that. Uh, I think uh, this board, and I think Jason said it right, and I believe this current board and boards to follow us will take a hard look at the point in time in history, wherever we are, is that best for the town of Bennington? I know a lot of folks are looking for what's going to happen when our grandkids are there, but uh, the other side of the argument is uh, we, we need to spur growth, and uh, there's ways of doing that. So I'm going to second that motion and uh, ask if there's any, we got a, a motion and a second, any more discussion on this? Anybody else like to say anything on it? I have a couple of comments. Go ahead, Greg. Um, just to backtrack a little, this is, the motion passed by the select board was to instruct the planning commission to illustrate what zoning changes would be necessary to allow us to maintain both commercial and industrial options on the Gladstone Development Corporation's property. The desire to maintain that option is not just a recognition of Bennington's manufacturing tradition, but the current state and growth of our manufacturing sector. Manufacturing is now the second largest and second best paying employment sector in Bennington behind healthcare. And to accommodate both the classifications and satisfy state guidelines on zoning, we would need to add manufacturing to the allowable uses in the planned commercial zone, which would reclassify a parcel as planned com commercial. And that would introduce industrial uses, industrial uses all the way down Northside Drive, all the way to US 7. So that's a point that I want to make sure people understand. This isn't just about flipping one piece of parcel land to commercial industrial. Um, also in consideration is that years ago we passed a citizen referendum in this town that surrendered local control of single rail retail sizing. Um, by Mr. Gladstone's description, that parcel could also be used for a single 165,000 square foot retail space. Uh, if we were to change that zoning, we would not have a, any control over what went in there as well. I think um, considering the 50-year effort to make downtown more accessible for retail, it would seem irresponsible to ex expose downtown and Northside Drive and Kosher Drive to that, that kind of a presence without any, any local control of that. Uh, in regards to the Gladstone Corporation, I agree with Joe. Um, I appreciate what Mr. Gladstone brought forward. I don't argue that his opportunities may increase um, should that property be rezoned. Um, but we also have several developers that work very hard to fit into uh, our, our zoning laws here. And um, <coughs> several what we would call uh, custom build retailers, such as Walmart and Tractor Supply, who moved into existing structures as a result of the hard work of this town has put in the last 20 years of, of zoning. Uh, 
And frankly, I don't think it's fair to them. I mean, what do we say to Walmart? We were just kidding. You know, you can put the Super Walmart up on the hill now um, after all the work they put through. Um, so uh, I appreciate the honest disclosure of Mr. Gladstone's plans. Um, and I would welcome anything that they came up with that would add to the uniqueness of Bennington. Uh, I'd be happy to take a look at that, and I will support Jason's motion uh, for the, um, the variance and thanking the Planning Commission. That's all. Any other board members? Justin. Well, you know, I'm not going to support this because, frankly, I think <laughs> it accomplishes nothing. Um, you know, unfortunately, I just think we're living in the dark ages here, and at some point in time, we're going to have to wake up and get into reality. Uh, we're not moving forward. We're moving backward. Um, this consultant comes in here and tells us we're poised for growth. I think we're poised to fail. Uh, it's unfortunate, but apparently it's all right, and a lot of people don't seem to take an issue with just sitting here and becoming stagnant. I don't understand it. I racked my brain to try and get my head around it, and I just can't come up with it. But um, I guess the idea that changing the property to commercial industrial doesn't, people can't understand that there's still option for industrial there. Commercial industrial doesn't mean commercial only. It means commercial and industrial. But uh, I've said enough on it, and frankly, I'm just, I'm extremely, extremely disappointed. But we'll leave it at that. Other select board members, Chris. Yeah, um, actually, I, I'm really intrigued by the, the motion on the table. I've, I did not support the change five years. Uh, well, I guess it's over five years ago. The, the last time we discussed this, um, I did want the uh, discussion to be brought back this, this time around, so I voted to uh, bring it back on the table. Um, you know, I, I'm always uh, preaching smart growth. You know, watch our sprawl. Uh, the last thing that I want to see happen is the Northside Drive corridor extended into North Bennington. We've seen that happen in the last couple of years with the dealerships that you know, are, are being built over there. Um, the only question that I have is, you know, what, what would that do to marketing that specific area? Uh, I think right now they're marketing it as industrial. I could be wrong. Um, would, would that make it more difficult to market the area if, if we... Um, well, I'm not sure who's marketing it other than Mr. Gladstone, and, and we've been told before. Well, marketing areas, period, not okay. specifically that, that site, but, you know, we're talking about the, that site right now. So I'm thinking if I owned a property that was zoned industrial, but I had the option to maybe turn it into a commercial, how would I go about marketing that? Go ahead, Jason. I'm not I sure can I address Chris's question. comments, because that's one of the underpinnings of of my motion. Uh, I'm not a real estate developer. Obviously we've spoken in this forum with, with a few uh, real estate developers. We've spoken certainly with Mr. Gladstone. I've worked with other real estate developers. I've talked with some zoning people. Uh, my opinion based on those conversations is this, and this, this is, let me be clear in saying this is my opinion and you know there's 20 people here. We could have 20 different opinions on this. But my opinion on that particular important question is this. What I'm trying to do is have this town send a signal that says uh, really kind of, you know, not to repeat what Greg said, is, is keeping it industrial recognizes the importance of industrial jobs to Bennington, Vermont. I think those industrial jobs, you know, I didn't attend the meeting last week with the consultant that was here. I did read the article about it. That and the word that jumped out at me from that article was patience. Now, to some people, 20 years has been too long and we've been too patient. For some people, I look at it and say we've got plenty of room to continue to grow commercial without surrendering that piece of property, lock, stock, and barrel uh, to a commercial designation, in part because if that were done, what we saw two weeks ago is a concept, and in fact, if that concept were done right, that might be something that really works for Bennington, and I would invite for him to come before us and say, this is what I have commitments for, but I need a commitment now from the board that you'll consider this variance, and then it would be incumbent on whoever constitutes the board at that time to, to, give, it a, to give it a hard look and, and make the decisions that we do routinely on a lot of different matters, whether it's the budget, whether it's whatever it is, when we try to, you know, 
put the plans in place for a properly developed town to develop and have have the infrastructure we need to have here for for good growth um, in fact this developer had it on a website marketed as looking for a partner to take him through the zoning change process with him I don't know how hard he worked at that or not and that's not for me to say and that's really not even a discussion I don't think for tonight but what I hope this motion does is sends a signal to this developer and other property owners that have property that could be developed in the town of Bennington to say we have our zoning in place we do a town plan every five years this is what the select boards adopted this is what we think is the proper inventory of different parcels different differently classified types of parcels within our within our area perhaps in 10 20 30 years we will have outstripped the commercial stock of inventory and need to add more commercial and we still don't have an industrial use and and then it uh, you know then it makes sense or perhaps next year we have this I'll use this developer because this is kind of where the conversation gets to anyway and he comes to us and says we have a commitment from a national retail chain four decent supporting stores um, and I'm not I just I'm just speaking off the cuff but whatever the plan is, we look at it and say, okay, that'll go on the grand list for however many, however many millions of dollars it'll go on for. That'll put so many hundreds of thousand dollars into our town budget each year without adding one child to the school system, which is important. Um, and we think if it were permitted in such a way where we were able to direct people to downtown, it didn't necessarily if we felt it didn't put at risk what, what what I feel is you know I think Justin's right I mean I can't dismiss totally what Justin's saying I mean he's looking at it in terms of what's what's important for Bennington in the future I think a vibrant historic downtown is not only necessary it's a cornerstone for Bennington's success in the next 50 years to call it necessary is an understatement with me uh, it's it's a cornerstone we have to have that I really think based on everything I believe, based on what I've heard, based on what I've seen, allowing that to just be flipped to commercial or to commercial industrial and seeing how I can only go by what our commercial zoning is now, that could be piecemealed off, it could be sold, it could, there's so many unrestricted things on a 20 acre parcel of land that could happen that could put so much risk on Northside Drive in downtown Bennington, I'm just not going to take that risk, I'm not taking it, it's not even a consideration for me but to look at growth for the future and to encourage a developer to come to us and work with us in concert in a way that we do it smart growth to use your term I want Stuart and I don't think tonight's the night to debate what that policy is I don't think tonight's the night to hash it out I don't even think tonight's the night to give Stuart our suggestions on perhaps what each of the seven of us think that that policy may read but I want our town manager to go back and say okay Here's what the board hopefully agrees to uh, by a majority vote that says we need to come up with a policy of how we are going to look at these situations when they arise when a developer comes to us and says I do own this piece of parcel this parcel of property it's classified <coughs> in zoning district X I've got a great use for it I think this is going to be good for Bennington but for this to happen it needs to be zoning category G I'm not going to even use commercial or industrial it could be anything and then it's incumbent upon the elected officials of this town to say okay what does this mean how does this affect everything else who does this place at risk who made the investments in zones already that we encourage to do so by virtue of our zoning and how will this affect them and how does it affect the whole does it make it better does it keep it on a level par or does it put things at risk I think the proposal that was put forth in this case to switch it to commercial or to commercial industrial puts it at risk I haven't supported it in the in the five and a half years I've been here I don't support it tonight I don't foresee me changing my opinion on that anytime in the foreseeable future but that is probably a more long-winded answer than you wanted but that's the answer as to how I think we get from where we are today to where I want to be tomorrow Chris, yeah, well, I, yeah I definitely understand where you're coming from um, 
it doesn't really answer my question as far as the marketing and on how that um, well let me, let me see built. let me take a stab at it and let's not look at this piece of property but let's say any piece of property is zoned different than somebody has a buyer for but by the part of this motion to have the, the town come up select board approve a policy that developer that landowner can say yeah it's zoned X however you have a board there uh, you have a town plan first of all it gives a lot of things besides just zoning uh, and you've done your market analysis I think you can take and uh, go in front of that select first the, the select board and say I want to bring in um, well I'll use the one that's been going around on that piece of property I want to bring in a Cabalis because there's not a Cabalis within 300 miles of Bennington uh, Vermont is a very heavy sports area so is uh, the capital district and uh, we don't think that will have a direct impact on it will on some but not on any major other function we've got here and oh by the way it can assist the downtown because Cabalas can sponsor a, 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 a outdoor life show in the, in the month of January and February where Bennington has some spaces to fill as far as activities we bring to town and he brings it to us and as, as the motion suggests and as the policy will say that I will vote on if it's there is that uh, we'll take seven of us do you agree with the, the market analysis that he's going to make business uh, is it going to bring something to Bennington besides just a quick dollar? Is it going to provide jobs? Um, and uh, I think that's the kind of thing that uh, would take take place in deliberation for the board, whoever it happens to be, to decide whether it's worth it or not. And, and I agree with that. Um, and, and actually, I'm really intrigued by, by the motion because, um, Jason, you've addressed all of the concerns that that I've had, you know, with this. I've been back and forth, and I've talked to a lot of people, with, just like the rest of us, and. And, uh, you know, I started feeling like, you know, this, this property has been open since I was 10, basically. Um, and uh, nothing has really, um, you know, sparked in, in this, this, uh, on this parcel. But when I listened to the developer and, and the, the list that he gave us, I disagree with just about everything that he proposed to us with the, the traffic impact. and and uh, the limited available uh, uh, retail space you know, that's out there right now. But um, so I can't, I can't consciously vote in confidence that changing this would, would um, help us. In fact, it very well could you know, hinder what we're trying to do. And um, so I think that your, your um, motion puts a lot of my concern at ease. My concern, though, at this point is, are we just adding another step? Because I know that when a developer comes in here, they have to do an impact study. They have to do a, a Act 250 process. You know, are we a asking for the same information that they're already giving, and we're just slowing down the process? I think, I think the way this is going, they're going to come to us first after they've done their due diligence as far as anybody. Unless it's a retailer. Uh, the market analysis and, and everything else they have to do the traffic studies that's all clear out there what a person has to do before he comes in front of us but I think uh, uh, in the case you mentioned 250 uh, if he gets a no-go from from the board for whatever reason then he doesn't have to go through the problem of uh, Act 250 and lawyers and doing all this kind of stuff so I mean I think it'd be I think it'd probably be easier for the developer if he's really put some thought into it Jason you know the collateral example I've used when asked a few times, and it's only a collateral example, it's, it's not, I will be the first to say this may not be apples to apples, but if anybody in this room were going to buy a, the average house in Bennington, Vermont, which would be a, a typical purchase for an adult in Bennington at some point, I suspect, uh, for, for many people, look at a house you make an offer. The offer gets accepted. Now, and, and, you know, unless there's there's a money tree in the backyard, most people then have to wait a little bit of time to get approved for a mortgage. But in within that process, you would go to a bank, you would pay an application fee. They may or may not, not charge you to have the appraisal done ahead of time. You're probably going to hire a property inspector to go look at the property. And all these things have to happen until you get to the closing and then you buy the house. But you're putting some of your money on the table before you get to the closing. And in fact, you might find out some things in that process that you might find out, hey, I love this house, but there's five termite nests in the attic and I'm not buying it as a result of this property inspection. Um, you don't get your money back from the property inspector. That was something the buyer put up 
knowing that, okay, I'm interested enough that I want to start making the steps to get to a closing. Now, in the example I'm giving you, I mean, we're, we're talking about hundreds, perhaps a thousand dollars for an individual to make a purchase like that. But if you extrapolate that out on the scale to something that may or may not ever be developed down there, it would probably be in the mill. I think it would be safe to say a, a development down there of, of almost any type would be in the millions, not the thousands or hundreds of thousands. And for a developer of that size and scope to be willing to to expend and put out and you know keep in mind they you know they're they're out there trying to attract tenants. They're trying to they're, they're not going to build something on the come. They're they're putting something out there. There's a lot of money to put into that being put into that even if it were zoned commercial right now they'd have to put out a lot of that money right now what I'm saying may add a very small incremental cost to come before this board and give us their study and their plan so that we can say okay based on these conditions we'll make this change I think in the size and scope of a proper development of that property that cost and that time spent uh, would both be such incrementally I don't want to say insignificant because that wouldn't be fair but incrementally small costs and delays. And delay's not even the right way to put it, but there would be some time in there. I think it would be such a relatively small overall cost that it, it, it wouldn't inhibit the marketing of it to your earlier comment. All right. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with, I'm for local control and I, I would uh, support that motion. Sharon, do you have anything to say? No, I'm going to continue to support it like I have for the past however many years I've been on this board. Okay. Jim? <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I'm going to support the motion. I think it satisfies the uh, sticking point uh, that was tough for any of us when, uh, when we were learning about this. I'll speak only for myself. Um, and allows not just Mr. Gladstone the opportunity to uh, come in with different ideas, but all the property owners. Okay, well, I'm going to, before I call for the vote, uh, I know not everybody's going to be happy with the decision, uh, but I hope people will see. Right now, Bennington, to the best of my knowledge, Stuart or Dan helped me out, we don't have a policy, in effect, that a developer can go to some customer and say, yeah, it's zone is. However, they have a policy that says they're willing to hear what you've got to say. Do we have a policy like that now? No, sir. And uh, I think that... Uh, I think if I had a piece of land that I felt pretty strongly about to do it, I think I could convince somebody to come in here and put the plan together to appear in front of the select board and say, um, we would like you to direct the planning commission to give us a variance on this piece of property, and here's how we think it's going to be beneficial to Bennington. And I think that's probably a fair thing to say. Um, I hope we put this to bed for a while. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes up again in the next iteration of town plan. However, I think that's not five years anymore. It's ten years, isn't it? Still five. Still five? Okay. So I'll call for a vote. You know, I'd like to make one more comment. Go ahead, Justin. Well. I think just, I just think instead of opening us up for development, this creates another level of bureaucracy. Now you can come in front of the select board, they give you good graces, you get to see the DRB. Then if everything goes good, you can go for Act 250. Then if you get your Act 250 permit, some group can come in and say, well, you know, we oppose it. I'll shoot some stream over on uh you know, God knows where, and then you can go in front of environmental court, and then we can appeal it, and then maybe if you're lucky and everything goes good, 10 years down the road, you can have development. Uh, this just adds another layer to the process. But. Uh, okay, I, I, I hear you, but that layer is the select board, and I've heard members of this board saying the select board ought to be more active on some decisions affect the entire town sure. than we are right now. So. Sure, and this isn't one of them. Okay. Uh, so the motion is there. All in favor? And that's 6-4 all against, 1. Okay. Thank you, board. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a discussion. What? Did you vote down changing it, Stuart? Is that what they just did? They yes. voted down changing it to commercial industrial. Yes. yes. So that can start the process if somebody wanted to bring this up in 20 days to bring it to the people for a vote if they get a petition, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay, next item on agenda is a discussion on Doug's. Actually, just if I may comment, to be perfectly accurate about it for the record and to whatever extent it matters that the record be properly preserved, the motion was to simply keep it industrial. It wasn't to deny it being commercial right. industrial. The motion was to leave it as is. Right. One, that was one part of the motion. 
Um, let me ask Stuart, do you think we could have a draft of that policy by our next meeting, or is that too much to ask for for us to look at? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How about two meetings? Uh, That's perhaps, right, because I won't be here the next meeting. Perhaps within, within a month we can have something back for okay. you. Uh, I think there are some legal issues that, that need to be addressed uh, in, in having the board take that kind of a position early on in the development proposal. Uh, so I'm going to be getting together with Dan and really taking a hard look at what the law allows us to do. Uh, but we'll be back to you in a month. Okay. And just, again, not to interject, but again, to be accurate about the motion, the motion was for the board to direct our town manager to do that. We're probably then going to, you know, we're going to have to talk about what that is. I mean, there's different, I could, we're not going to do it tonight, but I could probably think of three or four different ways that could go and what's better or what's worse, and we'll talk about it then. I just think this is a way to move the ball forward, put us in a better position to help Bennington down the road uh, and I make that third part of my motion you know frankly you know yeah do I have an idea of what I if I wrote the policy how I would write it yes I do but there's seven other there's six other opinions up here and there's many more opinions that I'm sure we'll hear from and we can debate and come up with that policy together as you know, as we start to work off of a draft, or if anybody else has any ideas on the board, I suspect we could submit some ideas ourselves to the board as to what ought to be in that type of a policy. But there's a whole process involving adopting a policy, too, that has public input and everything else, correct? Yes. So, I mean, that's another process that begins, and there's waiting periods once it's been warned and everything else. So, uh, you know, everybody, people will have a chance to weigh in on that policy besides just a select board, okay? But citizens have a legal right to know, did you turn down the request or did you not turn down the request? Because the voting process starts within 20 days to get a petition to overturn what you just did. Now, you could have delayed this, had the discussion, you didn't need to vote on it tonight, and then that would take up to 10 months you would have before the legal uh, petition thing kicks in. But the, the, your question is, was the zoning, get it down to English, was the zoning changed in Johnson Control tonight? Is that your question? Was it changed to commercial no. industrial? You no. Denied, the answer was no. You denied we, the commercial industrial. That wasn't even it was, no, we didn't it was not even. It. We, no. we decided not to change it. <coughs> that's, change. I think that's a denial because that was the request. That is not no, the, a denial. The motion by the select board was to look at the planning commission's recommendation if that were to happen, and the motion was to pass on that change to the zoning. So. And what was before us was not specific to Johnson Controls. It was to basically change a definition regard it was it to put it into plant commercial it was to plan, add manufacturing it was, it to was the to planned add commercial district that parcel to planned commercial and then add an additional i think three uses to what is within the planned commercial district and that's what we're we didn't do that tonight my motion was to leave it industrial it had nothing to do with a single parcel going to commercial industrial so you've never voted on whether you should change it to commercial industrial is that what you're saying You've not voted on changing it, whether, whether it should be commercial or industrial? That's what was requested by the developer. That's what you sent. But that wasn't, well. Well, it certainly was. Well, that was, if I. That was not the procedure. The procedure was we had a vote to look at changing that location. We sent it to the Planning Commission for their recommendation. They came back after looking at all the ways of doing it and their recommendation that if you were to change it, to change it to planned commercial which opened up more than just, and that's what we've debated, that's what the public hearing has been on, and that's the vote as I see it tonight that took place. So that I can go out tomorrow and start a petition asking you people an advisory question, would you put it on the ballot? Let me give, give you, for instance, if I get 500 signatures, would you put it, well, it, it would have to be on the ballot in March, advisory to change this to commercial, straight commercial. Would you people honor the wishes of the people if it came back to change it to commercial? I, I recommend to you, Mike, because you've had a long history of doing this, call your lawyer, Paul Gillis, and I tell him what took are. place tonight, and he'll give you the answer to that. I, I'm not prepared to tell you yes or no. I'm telling you, you can do that. I talked to him today and I talked to him the other day. Go ahead and do it. Then, then I would suggest if you talk to him you feel comfortable to do it, then go ahead and do it. Because you guys haven't. You've got 10 months. You really haven't acted on the fact. Could you make this commercial industrial then? And that's what was requested by the developer. Hey, hey, Joe, may I just say something to that? Uh, Mike, we obviously disagree on this. However, to be perfectly fair to the seven people sitting here tonight, 
to the Planning Commission, to Stu Hurd. I don't want to leave anybody out, but my recollection is, well, first, I think the comment is completely accurate that in the five and a half years I've sat on this board, this has been the single most debated topic in that five and a half years, excluding the annual budget debate and putting a budget together, which is institutional in nature to this type of a board. This single issue has been vetted, discussed, debated publicly, privately, at meetings on the street, more than any other issue that I can come up with. Uh, and within the process that culminated a few minutes ago with the vote that we just had, we had, I, it's, the, it's the end of a long day, so I'm probably wrong on the uh, chronology here. And if somebody from the Planning Commission here, and I know there's a couple, and also Dan Monks can correct me or help me, we had several work session meetings. We had joint warned meetings, of which you attended at least one of. And then we had findings. We then sent the Planning Commission to do their work. They came back with a proposal. We then had the required hearings on it. We've had two hearings on it, and now we've had a vote. So to say we've done nothing, I'm going to charitably say, is very inaccurate. I'm not saying you didn't do anything. I'm saying no, you, you, need to, did. you need to give an answer. Did you vote to well, change it or didn't you? My, are you I, voting to change Johnson Control to commercial industrial? I'm going to submit to the chairman not, right? that no, this I, is becoming a circular yeah, this, conversation this, this that is, is becoming, uh, Michael, we've answered the question three times by my count at this point. Mike, uh, if, you're, if your issue is you want to go out with a petition, obviously as a citizen you're, you're willing to, you're, you're allowed to do that. You said you've already talked to Paul Gillis. I'm sure no matter what we say, you're going to go ahead and do what you do because that's how you've done before when you talk to Gillis on things. And my advice to you is do what you got to do. do this, and then we'll find out. If, do it to ask his attorney, the attorney, the town attorney, okay? Because Jason's not the town attorney. After the decision. I've never held myself out to be Mike, and, and I make it a point Jace, that I'm not Jace, here to Jason, do that. we're not going to get into discussion. Jason, that, okay? Mike. I'm saying, could you please ask the town attorney? to clarify what decision you made tonight because it needs to be clarified so that if I do want to go out with a petition, I can do it one way or another, but there has to be clarification. Could you do that, Stu? I don't, I don't need to, Mike. I'm very clear on what happened tonight. The board essentially decided not to accept the Planning Commission's recommendations to change all of the planned commercial uses to add industrial uses to them and include the Johnson Controls partial in that district. So they've said no to that? They said no to that. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, fine. Thank you. Let's move on. Next on agenda is Doug's on Main Street bar discussion. Um, this because, uh, refresh my memory, is there not a state hearing on the 26th concerning incidents that occurred at Doug's? I don't have the... That is correct. Paul, you want to come up to the to the mic because I think you might have some questions or we might have some questions of you. <laughs> Joe, what are we being asked to do with this tonight? Just if we want to do anything. That's, the fact that we've had... That is, that's the question. And the question was uh, put before you uh, several meetings ago uh, and uh, following that, uh, the chair asked that we not only look at incidents for Doug's Bar over the last, last 11 months, but also Ryan's Cafe, the other downtown establishment that is open at those hours of the night. And what I've provided to you is just a comparison or a breakdown of the, the various incidents uh, and what was associated with them. Uh, this board is not necessarily involved in the hearing on the 26th, except that you are the local liquor control board. You have the opportunity to take a position before that body uh, when they are considering whether or not to suspend or revoke Doug's license based on an incident that occurred in June. And that you had the hearing notice for. Uh, this was brought forward by members of the board who, who wanted an opportunity to at least review this and see whether or not this board takes a position at all. We have not been asked by the State Liquor Control Board to testify at this hearing. No. We have not been asked to provide anything up there. Again, as Stuart says, we are the local 
Liquor Control Board. We have had this establishment in front of the board before because of concerns we had incidents occur there. Our chief of police has provided us a little memorandum, or actually the town manager has with the uh, assistance of police, of what's taken place over the last 11 months in the two establishments there. And the question of the board is, uh, are we willing, do we want to weigh in or we just want to go ahead and let the state uh, go with the investigations that they conducted uh, to decide on what could or could not happen to that establishment on Main Street? And all I need to know is yes, we want to weigh in or no, we don't want to weigh in. If this is a state action, I, I just I don't understand why we're looking, why we're even involved in this really. Okay. Uh, I would recommend we take no action and let the let the state handle it. Okay. It's being Other, handled on a state level in the state liquor control board. Okay. Other board members. Um, although I I believe that this is an issue that um, you know we are obligated to at least review um, because our constituents come to us with issues um, our businesses come to us with issues um, I think that we need to be aware and that we need to to uh, to kind of keep our, our, our eye on on this but I don't believe at this point the select board needs to be involved <coughs> other board members I'd just like to uh, ask Doug some questions about uh, uh, let's let's keep this here it's not a hearing okay. uh, I wish you had done that before but uh, Let's, let's hear from the select board I, members. Mayla, go ahead and do it. I'd just like to remind the, the board that we do sign their liquor, their liquor license at the beginning of the year. So we do have a little bit of a vested interest in this. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, we need to come to, I mean, we've listened to them before. They've been before us before. We know there's problems there. Um, so... I mean, I don't. Th I think it's within our purview to make a recommendation to the state liquor board, if okay. we if we see fit. Other members. I don't know that I have right. enough information to to make a recommendation <clears throat> one way or the other. I mean, um, I, it's a hard business. Uh, the the business the place where their business is the third business that's been there. Uh, come at me, correct me if I'm wrong. And there's been similar problems. Um, on weekend nights there and the previous establishments and I have had um, you know people I know that live downtown tell me that some you know the noise at night and things that spill out of there I've seen it with, with the previous owners um, uh, it's it seems to be a little bit inherent in having a uh, a young bar these days and you know I, I've had young people tell me that they can't afford to pay for drinks in bars so they do a couple shots before they go out you know and when you consider the amount of responsibility that bar owners and bartenders have now on establishing where, how much they've served somebody and whatnot to think that somebody's come in your bar with three shots of tequila in them be, that you didn't sell them to start the night. It, it, it is a difficult thing. Um, on the other hand, it's no secret. I mean, anybody who owns a bar knows that that's the challenge of running that business. It's nothing that I would want to take on as a livelihood right now. So, um, you know, I, I, I feel for people who run these businesses, but obviously there's there's incidents something has to has to change um, I think and I don't think anybody would disagree with that you know and I'd like to see people be responsible for their own behavior you know for people to go out for a night on the town and end up rolling on the sidewalk throwing punches um, is is not a way to to behave in public um, or at home either um, but as far as the incidents I mean I read the report from the state inspectors um, I don't, you know, I, I can't say I wasn't there. Um, you know, I, I don't know that I can make a recommendation one way or the other. I found Doug and Mary to be, you know, as far as business owners and members of the community, to be, be very helpful and very generous um, as far as what goes on there at night. I haven't really witnessed it, and I, you know, I've never seen firsthand, so um, I think due process is probably my recommendation. I can say that I do have some firsthand uh, knowledge of this and I applaud Doug and his, his uh, efforts to make the downtown a better place but I think it's fair to say that in the um, one incident in particular I've been an ear witness to three others in the one incident that I saw it was close to a riot if not a riot in the middle of Main Street and in the back of my mind while it was occurring all I could I was hoping that I wouldn't hear Somebody got stabbed or shot, and uh, 
I just I needed to say that. Okay. Jason, you haven't weighed in? Do you want to weigh in? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think, frankly, Greg Van Houten said it better than I'm going to say it. I, I'm not typically on Main Street at 1.30 on in the morning on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday nights when I suspect most of the incidents have occurred. Uh, my root concern I've said it before, the economics is the study of the allocation of scarce resources. Police coverage is a scarce resource. We can't afford to have a concentrated presence when we, because of these incidents, and I don't know that we do or we don't, and Chief Doucette can answer that question. I know we had a meeting a year ago. Was it a year ago, six months ago? When January of 2011. A year, time flies, a year and a half, more than a year and a half ago. We had a meeting about uh, this at that time where uh, I think the chief said we, we were consuming a lot of resources at those parts of the week where incidents were spilling into the street and given the limited resources we've got to put that many resources on that spot in Bennington when it's, uh, you know, frankly a, a time of the day and week that there's going to be other emergencies going on elsewhere is a concern for the town of Bennington. Uh, my thought would be uh, we have charged Chief Doucette with the responsibil responsibility of managing our police department and being our chief of police. Part of that charge is to say, um, here's, here's what I need, select board. Here's what I don't need. Here's what's important. Here's what's less important. Uh, the police department, I think, is the best barometer. And I think, to be fair, the, the other side of the coin would be the business owners uh, would have their input as well. Um, but as far as this board giving a recommendation to a state board, I think I'd like to see what what our chief of police has to say about that because, I mean, this falls on his lap by at our direction. So rather than have us debate something that we really, frankly, you know, we've got a couple reports, we've heard stories, we've had a meeting a year and a half ago, I'd rather hear what the people who have first-hand knowledge of it have to say before I say whether or not we ought to file something with the state liquor board as the town liquor board. Okay, Chief, that's why I asked you up there. Um, uh, take us back to January 2011, when at that point in time we took no action, let it continue. How have you seen the incidents, have they occurred uh, since then? Uh, you know, has it, has it improved during a period of time, gotten worse, and where do you think we are now with it? Well, in April of 2011, we decided that we were gonna revisit this in six months, and we failed because we did not revisit right. it. Um, one of the things that I, I will credit uh, Doug on doing is after that April 2011 <coughs> meeting, uh, things did improve uh, for a short period of time, and now we seem to be back to where we were before. Uh, we're having issues. Uh, some of the other downtown merchants uh, have complained, although uh, they don't want to go on record and don't want to put their name on paper, uh, and they ask, you know, when, when is the police department going to correct this? Um, we have the opportunity uh, and have had opportunities to take some action. I'm not saying put them out of business, perhaps limiting the hours. We, we talked about that the last time. But again, I want to go backwards and talk about this hearing on September 26, which I don't want to share much info on until after the hearing. I think perhaps we should take a look and see what the state liquor board is going to do uh, with Doug's and see if there are any repercussions. Um, they have the right to have a hearing and offer evidence in their defense. Um, I too have read the report uh, from Liquor Control um, and, and I don't want to really discuss that at the present time, but I think that they are entitled to due process and I think that we should wait and see what happens here in a few days uh, with that, and based on uh, what happens with that and other issues that we've been seeing, perhaps come back to this board and say, this is what the state had to offer, and uh, we, you're right, and, and I think Sharon touched on it, you know, you all sign the liquor license. You know, locally, you are liquor control. And if we continue to have problems such as the problems that we have had, on and off at Doug's and things spilling out into the street, which some of you have been witness to, we need to take some type of action. 
You know, we're, we're tying up resources. Uh, we don't sit outside of Doug's to, to make it uncomfortable for the people that are going to Doug's. Um, you know, we sit out there because we're tasked with keeping the peace and making sure that people are safe. And that's not always the case at this establishment. Um, sure, we have problems at other liquor establishments in our community, but unfortunately, whether it's the clientele or over-serving or, or what is actually happening here to make some of these things take place, those are the things that we need to look at. Um, I understand that uh, Mary and Doug are very supportive of this community, Penguin Plunge, and the list goes on and on, but that's all well and good at those certain times, but we need to look and see what's going on there you know, after hours here at night and make sure that the community is safe and that we're not tying up all sorts of resources, arresting and processing people. We have people coming out of there with very high blood alcohol contents, and you know, we, we need to curb this. Um, so I, I think in all fairness to them, uh, they should be entitled to their hearing on the 26th. We should take a serious look at what happens at that and then make a decision locally whether we're going to limit hours or we're going to renew their liquor license when it comes time. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Paul, does the state require someone from the department to be at the hearing? Uh, no. Uh, what, what's hap what will happen there is um, the uh, liquor investigators that were in the bar that night uh, more than likely will be at that hearing to present uh, the information that they have. They don't ask you to no. present any evidence? Okay. Okay, well. I mean, I think that's not a bad suggestion that Paul's making that we, you know, see what happens at the at the state level and then maybe readdress this in a month as i understand it uh Stuart, if we weigh in on this then the state is <coughs> ob then there's a whole new process that takes place is that correct and, well this this hearing is being initiated by the state of vermont uh, well, that's as, the one on 26. yes as as the as based on that one incident <coughs> uh, and i and i think that uh, it will make a determination based on that incident and the testimony that it has as to what it will do. I, I think the chief's suggestion is actually an excellent suggestion. Yes, we could weigh in and recommend based on that, what we had before us, that you know the, the state ought to take one action or another or no action at all. Uh, will they give that the weight of evidence? Probably not, because it's not germane to the testimony of the liquor control inspectors that were in the building that night. Okay. So I, I think Paul's suggestion is, is probably the best one. Let's wait and see what happens. And then we, as the local liquor control uh, authority, can react following that as to how we go forward uh, with this establishment. Generally, if a license is suspended, there's a certain period of time that it, it cannot function. And I think there are insurance requirements that, that ramp up. Even if a license is revoked, it's only revoked for a certain period of time and certain things ramp up uh, where the liability insurance of the owner comes into play. But if it's revoked, then it's a whole new application. It will come back before us as well as the state. Okay. Uh, I agree with the, the, the police chief's recommendation about a few other things go forward. I would hope that uh, Doug and his mother are focusing on the 26th to prepare to provide the state with every information they're looking at because I think the future of Doug's is going to rest on the, what comes out of 26th. And what I understand happens if there's no action taken, then we can take a look at the instance here and we can decide ourselves whether you want to what? Suspend or revoke? That's within our power? Well, it, both, both are within our power. Any action we take locally in those matters is appealable to the state board right. as well. Uh, or we could simply sit and, and discuss how we go about renewing the license when the time comes, which would be in April uh, of 2013. Okay, I guess what I'm going to ask then, uh, I'm going to sort of vote on this. Um, and I, I can make the motion as chair. I'll make the motion that the board takes no action at this point in time to let due process take place, let the state conduct their hearings on the 26th, and we'll review the case after the state hearing. So I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? And that's unanimous. Good luck. I have a yes, ma'am. Are we going to be at the next select board meeting? It's not going to be on my agenda unless there's probably a reason not. to be. Probably not. What do you mean? I, I don't understand. Because I got a letter today at 1 o'clock. From where? From the town. That we were on the agenda. There was no 
no okay. Um, I thought though you were here when we said we were going to postpone it two weeks ago to this this Monday. I know you were sitting there. Right. When I that I said we'd talk day. about it then. I just okay, we'll we'll make sure if you're on the agenda, we'll make sure you're notified ahead of time. But right now, I have no reason to see why you'd be best on our agenda uh, for our next meeting. Okay. okay. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Shires Byway. And Jonah, are you here? Yes. You want to talk? Come up to the mic, please. Paul, thank you. Thank you for what you're giving us, too, and every good work on this thing. We have addressed Shires Byway before, so where are we now on it? Uh, yes, thank you for giving me your time. Uh, and just for people that don't know me, I know most of you on the board. My name is Jonah Spivak. My wife and I have the Hawkins House here in Bennington. I also have a graphic design studio called Spectrum Design. I serve on the Bennington Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. I was also one of the volunteers who worked on the creation of the Shires of Vermont Byway, which was an approximately year and a half long process, which you may recall I came before you previously to talk to you about. And I'm very grateful that this board at that time uh, unanimously approved that effort, uh, which was successful and was approved last June. Um, one of the reasons I stated that we wanted to go after a designation such as a byway for uh, the Route 7, 7A corridor through our region is it opens up opportunities for grants to our communities that we didn't have before. One of the things that we were able to do once the designation occurred last June was to go after our first grant, which we did do. Uh, it was a highly competitive grant. There was approximately $200 million worth of grant requests to the program. The program had about $18 million to disperse. Our grant, along with a couple of others in Vermont, were, was one of the few that was funded. Uh, in this time, this fiscal time with the federal deficit and budgets the way they are, um, I was astonished and delighted to have that happen. You may recall that when we first presented to you about uh, some of the grants that were available, there was some discussion about how federal grants worked and how uh, there's often an 80% federal funding, 20% local match. Uh, one of the things at that time that I suggested could be something that a town could do uh, to help us with these grants uh, would be to do things like put up a byway sign for us uh, by the town crews, and that actually could be considered a donation by the town, which we could use towards our 20% match for our grant. Uh, in fact, in the grant, we do have a component for byway signs. Uh, basically, they're going to be small uh, speed limit size signs that identify the corridor as a byway. Um, and that has been approved in our, that grant request. And I'm now coming back to you to remind you uh, of that conversation to see if the town of Bennington would be willing to let our town crews at their convenience uh, while doing other work put up some of those byway signs for us. Uh, what that means for Bennington, uh, we are allowed, and actually I'll have Mark step in here. Uh, Mark Anders is our partner at the BCRC uh, in this grant, and if uh, there's any technical questions, I'll immediately defer to him. He's been a critical partner in this process since day one. Uh, <clears throat> my understanding is the regulations allow us two signs per town. Uh, we're also allowed additional signage at what are termed as confusing parts of the route and kosher drive intersection appears to be a location where we'll be able to get additional signs. So we're looking at approximately a total of four signs uh, in the town of Bennington that we would like to see if the town would be willing to put up for us. And again, this is pending, uh, the, the design of the signs has been approved by the state. The locations of the signs, we're still working with BCRC to identify the best locations for those byway signs. Um, and those require state approval. But once they have been approved, uh, we would like to have our town crews, if it's okay with you, put them up. Uh, again, it doesn't, it's not time specific. Once it's done, in my mind, it makes sense that the town crews would do this. Uh, while they're doing other projects, when they're not busy doing other things. Uh, so again, my purpose here tonight is really threefold. Number one is to give you this update on the Shires Vermont Byway, uh, to request that the town highway department, if it's okay with you, be willing to put up some of these signs for us when they've been approved by the state, and also to let you know uh, about another funding source.
course. But before I get to that, perhaps there, I would love questions. Yeah, a couple or questions. You're yes, going please. fast, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back you up. The Shires Byway, in order to get this, if I call, and you correct me if I'm wrong, there's a lot of byways out there, that other towns other than Bennington had to present that in front of their legislative body for approval to move forward. Is that correct? The Shires of Vermont Byway crosses eight communities, and each of those communities throughout Bennington County had to vote to approve that corridor management plan and approve the byway. I understand they all did. They were all unanimous in their support. Okay. So the next question is, is that uh, you are going to them also because Bennington's just one, even though we're the largest town in the county, it's affected. However, there are other towns that have greater distances. That's correct. On and that highway, that's byway. Abs you're absolutely correct. The same question that I'm asking you tonight is going to be repeated seven other times throughout this county. Okay. This is well, a volunteer effort, by the way. <laughs> God bless you. I'm almost Medicare age, Jonah, so I'm lying. <laughs> no, I got two more months, all right? Please. Uh, okay, any other board member? No, I okay. think we should support this. Okay, you want to do this in pieces? I guess his first request is once they have the signs that they have designed or having designed, present to us probably two. Well, Maybe it looks like three. it's going to be four. Four. Are we willing to work out something with our, our town crew to put those signs up? So we can help in that respect if you folks approve it. We've done it before? Uh, we, I think we've not necessarily with these folks, but we have worked with other folks who are putting up signs okay. that have been approved. Board members? If I may, Joe, it's important to have people who know what they're doing put signs up on highways. Um, if we send out, you know, the rank and file volunteer, yeah, you, you may not see it installed the okay. way it should be and meet state specs. So uh, from that perspective, I think it makes good sense to have okay. our highway crew do it. Other board members want to weigh in? Mm -hmm. Do we need a vote? It looks like we have consensus. Do we have consensus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. First part, go. Second part. <laughs> I would just also I see big dollars that. next to the next one. Is that the big money one? <laughs> well, saving by the best action, to last? I'm sorry? You're saving the best to last? Well, actually, in my mind, this byway is the best. This is a big chunk of change. This yeah. byway grant we were approved was over $62,000. That's going to be going directly into our local community for the betterment of all. Uh, this really is uh, the big one. Uh, the second one's not quite as exciting. I led with the, 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 excited, the exciting one first. But I would comment that the action that you just took tonight by allowing this be a donation we are leveraging that uh, for an additional 80%. So it's a wonderful thing, and I thank you for that. So we're, we're charging, what, $80 an hour, Stuart, for the work? $1,000 to sign. $1,000 to sign. I'm not sure, but I believe in the grant request, I was limited to 55 an hour, but I believe me, I maxed out what I was allowed to. So. All right. Isn't that the speed limit? <laughs> Uh, the other thing I just wanted to bring to your attention, this is primarily informational. Um, in addition to my other commitments, I'm also a, a volunteer with the Shires Regional Marketing Organization. That's the group that the uh, Bennington Chamber of Commerce, our executive director is here tonight, the Manchester Chamber of Commerce, uh, as well as attraction owners, business owners, and concerned individuals. It's, a, it's another uh, volunteer committee organization um, that speaks for the entire county. It's not just Bennington. It's, it's really a unifying organization. Uh, one of the things we're able to do through that volunteer group was to make contact with the Champlain Valley National Heritage Program, the CVNHP for short. It's one of 49 national heritage programs throughout the United States that basically, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote this because it's kind of a mouthful, uh, is dedicated to providing financial and professional support to communities, museums, and organizations that work to interpret and promote our region's history and culture. So this is another source for possible grant opportunities that communities within our region can take advantage of. Uh, you say Lake Champlain, we're nowhere near Lake Champlain, but actually Bennington County is the southernmost county that is technically part of the Lake Champlain Basin. Uh, Otter Creek in the northern part of the county ends up in Lake Champlain. And because of that little tongue of river, uh, we are now fortunate to be able to take advantage of this program. We'll give them the Roaring Branch if they want it. <laughs> uh, so I basically bring this to your attention, and I do want to let you know that you're fortunate to have a town employee, Michael Harrington, who currently sits on this committee, uh, and that he is a conduit to you to learn about grant opportunities that come up. Uh, but since this was a recent designation that we went after and got, I wanted to make sure that you at the select board was aware of this uh, development, and if you had people that you felt should be involved in this committee uh, or you'd like to appoint or suggest we invite, uh, you're welcome to do so.
Hey, Jonah, now what are you specifically asking for now in this part? Now in this part, it's, it's not a specific request. I'm encouraging you to invite support or suggest people that might want to be involved okay. in this. The town does have representation in the hands of uh, Michael Harrington, but right. I wanted to open it up for other people that might be interested. So Stuart, maybe we can add that in your next column, just uh, ask for volunteers for that. Sure. Okay. Uh, let me, okay, you know, something you want to ask, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I hate to ask Joanne to come to the mic, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, wait before Joanne comes our, to the mic. Our, I want to ask uh, Joanne. No, I mean, a question. this is important, I think, because our welcome center is on track to be completed sometime soon. And we've been told our change. When, when, I'm sorry? Um, as far as I know, we're still hoping to open Joanne. Okay. And uh, I see uh, chaos is here. I see brochure racks. Um, I'm hope I know there's some regulations as far as what we can do and cannot do in state welcome centers, but will we be able to? Um, point things out like the uh, Shires Byway and we'll be able to do all those other things. So we're going to be able to promote Bennington from that location along with anything else that we want to do. Okay. <laughs> all right. Great. Yeah. Great. And uh, thanks, Joanne. Um, Go ahead, Sharon. No, that was my question. If there was going to be funds available to put things in the Welcome Center and advertise the Shires Byway. There is now, right? In, in our visitor center, we, we do have little maps and things like that. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, John, I think this, you've done great work, you and your volunteers, and, and I'm, I personally, as a town, Resident, happy to see these byways. Uh, you, as Mr. Byway, I would ask for your assistance of killing the word bypass when it's used in conjunction with Bennington. We don't have a Benny, we don't have a bypass. We have a Veterans Memorial, World War II Veterans Memorial Highway that surrounds almost three quarters of our town, and we have Highway 275. That's 279. Okay, so I guess it's a plea to everybody. Uh, the second leg is completed. There is no bypass. <coughs> and there's great signage on that one uh, to, to get it in. So, Jonah, anything else you want to discuss on this? I would just comment that both the Vermont Welcome Center that's coming and the newly <coughs> designated byway are both tools that we'll be able to use to hopefully get as many travelers off of that highway right. and into our local community as possible. That's great. Thank you, Jonah. Why, you why, why build it again? <laughs> Just <kidding. Okay. laughs> Moving right along. Thank you very Thank much. You, I appreciate Thanks, your John. support and time. All right. Uh, I think, Dan, uh, <coughs> Michael, you're up next with the municipal planning grants. No, yes. Study on housing needs. Uh, That's somebody else. Nope. That's you. I can take that. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, Dan can jump in here if. Um, if he wants to. Uh, the opportunity came up to do uh, an application for the 2013 Municipal Planning Grant uh, and in talking with Jim Sullivan from BCRC, uh, knowing and recognizing that the deadline was running short, he and I uh, discussed the opportunity to discuss what has been, a, I think, a a reoccurring theme and topic of discussion at a lot of our economic development planning meetings, which is the idea or need for workforce or professional housing within the community and, and the need to either add more or designate certain areas or uh, encourage growth in that area. And so uh, much of the information... What's yes. the definition of... What's the price range that you're talking about when you say workforce housing? It, price range in terms of salary or the housing? The housing. Uh, I think it's quality of housing, and I don't necessarily have a designated. My hope is that this study would identify what those are and what the current needs are. Yeah. Um, and, and Jim uh, was instrumental in putting this uh, proposal together, and uh, he too didn't identify necessarily specific uh, specific price range. Um, the idea being that 
we do want to obviously position our community uh, to support a growing need for uh, working individuals in the community uh, to be an attractive uh, location for areas like the hospital, which are recruiting from outside locations, uh, as well as some of our manufacturing areas as well. So we saw this opportunity uh, to put together a plan to maybe turn some of the anecdotal information that we've received uh, over time into some hard uh, statistical information that we could use going forward. And it is, uh, you see it in the application, but it is right in line with uh, where we left off with our town plan and, and the recommendations in the town plan uh, to move uh, forward in identifying what is considered not just affordable housing, but attractive housing uh, to all ranges of, of income. So what you have before you is the sample application uh, and obviously the requirement for us to be able to submit this is it has to have support uh, from the Planning Commission as well as the Select Board and so you'll also see a draft uh, resolution in your packet as well. It has gone uh, before the Planning Commission and, and they are on board with it and I've received letters of support from uh, BCIC as well as the Chamber and uh, I'm assuming uh, BCRC obviously uh, and possibly even uh, BBC as well, so. Okay, board members. Barry, you, you wanna weigh in on this at all? <coughs> See now you've already signed the application? You're comfortable with it, the Planning Commission's comfortable with it? And I, I'm sensing from reading the application, this will assist us in the process of going through our town plan review as we're doing now, correct? So it might eliminate some hours or need to, for staff to get into that stuff. Go ahead, Dan. Dan, come to the mic, please. I know like me, but I wanted to, to kind of reiterate it. This is, I think of this more as an aspirational study. It's where we want to go with housing. Yes. It's attracting the types of folks that we know we <coughs> the professional jobs that we have out there that are going unmet and one of the things we hear over and over is just not the housing there for that group of folks and uh, so that's going to be a focus of it it's not going to ignore every uh, other aspects of it but that's the focus of this study and, and hopefully at the end of, of the study which Mike and Jim I think see as a two-part study that we'll have a vision uh, for our future with regard to housing uh, that wouldn't isn't just perhaps catering to the needs that we have now but hoping to develop the housing uh, that we need to attract the workforce that we that we all hope to have and maintain here. Okay, I mean, I, I didn't, as I go through it, I guess, as you probably all know, I've had a lot on my plate a few days, for the last few days. Um, I didn't see anything about RAC in here. Are we going to go to RAC and get their information? Because i got to imagine they've done a lot of this they, already. They are in here. Uh, they there are? are specific parts where we identify them as okay. part of the steering committee and some other. Right. And this, this doesn't lock us into anything. This just allows you to go ahead and apply for the grant. It allows us to apply for it. Even the amount we're applying for doesn't require a match. So even okay. if we receive so the grant, uh, it would be a straight uh, $8,000 or up to $8,000. There's no local match for that. There's no local match. Jason. That was my question. Jason. Um, it, it's, it's fine and well to include RAC. They, they are a large landlord. There are other landlords out there. Uh, we always seem to default to RAC. They do do a good job. I, I'm not knocking that. But what about other landowners? Mm -hmm. Part of the idea in this process was simply to identify what's out there that we're aware of. I mean, I don't think Jim or I have a, um, a specific idea in terms of who we would or wouldn't reach out to. So we're certainly open to any ideas. There is some idea of um, some public discussion as well, an opportunity for that. We, we do have, you know, we can identify some major landlords in this town that yeah. I think it would be good to talk yeah. to them. Jason? Sure. In, in, you know, I, 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 not to belabor the point, but, you know, I always, you know, it seems like we always have these grants, we always have these studies, and that's all fine and well. But when we talk about identifying housing that we don't have, I'm a little, you know, I mean, that was the point of my first question as to, well, you know, what are we missing? I mean, I don't, you know, anybody, I mean, I, I guess I don't get it. I mean, if you click onto a website, if you go to realtor.com, you've got lower priced houses, you've got medium priced houses, you've got higher priced houses, you've got cheaper apartments, you've got middle priced apartments, you've got more expensive apartments, we've got condos, we've got, we have the array, and nobody on the front end coming in, and I'd just like to hear it, I'm not necessarily against it, but what is it that we don't have 
that we need to have. I mean, come. I mean, I, I mean, I can, I can speak. Dollar study. I can that? speak specifically to what we've heard from our local manufacturing companies as Please. well as our, our hospital, which is uh, the professionals that are in the community are having a hard time finding professional housing that they feel is at market rate and affordable for them, uh, given uh, being either maybe a single professional or a professional coming to town um, that isn't aware of the area, uh, maybe only has a, a, a husband or a wife with them. Um, the, the other piece to that was the idea that there is a shortage in terms of any type of uh, rental programs that are out there. We have individual rental pieces, I think, around our community that you can find at any price range, but whether uh, people find that desirable or not, uh, what we're hearing is that they don't find what we currently have desirable. Now that's coming from the conversations I'm hearing at the BCR, uh, BCIC uh, monthly meeting, as well as talking with the hospital who does a lot of recruiting, obviously, for our area. Now, obviously, those, those things are on the web and they're identified, and I'm house hunting at the moment right now as well. So, um, but I think before I start, um, suggesting what those things are. I mean, part of what I think in terms of, from an economic development standpoint, when we start talking about crafting what we want this community to look like, um, you know, in terms of the level of housing, whether it's low to moderate income, whether it's moderate income or high income, 100% uh, or mean, 120% of mean, um, you know, I, I don't like to jump to the conclusion. And so the ability to have what would be, in my mind, more significant data uh, to support either what are people specifically looking for, how does that relate to what we currently have in our housing stock, uh, and then if it's different, what does that change? I, you know, just going off of what Dan was saying in my conversations with Jim, it's really in my mind saying we can we can continually survey uh, and look at the current needs of what our community needs, but we will always identify those needs based on our current population, and so you will always be surveying the people that already live in our community and that are already here. If we're saying we want to attract more people from a technology industry or an, ed an engineering background or uh, a more professional, uh, pe professionally diverse background, um, then I think it's important for us to identify not just who we are and what we serve right now, but what do we want that to look like in the future? My hope is that this study will allow us to benchmark against other communities that have I, have done that, identified that, and have created a market um, in their community for professional and workforce-based housing. Um, so if we can say, you know, we like what we have, we'd also like it to look more like this, or we'd like to add some components, it'll allow us a benchmarking opportunity to do that as well. Okay. I, you identify. Sorry, did I interrupt? Greg, go ahead, and I'll go after. Well, I I, uh, I heard recently, and I can't remember when, but within the last week or two, that uh, you look at real estates in the area. The houses that are selling are the ones that are over three hundred thousand dollars. Those are the ones that are moving. The ones that uh, this particular realtor classified as affordable housing uh, were going from one hundred sixty to one hundred eighty, and they were taking over six months to move if there was a house here. And the same one said is our, if you look at it, our downtowns, and Bennington included, is for the young professionals coming in, is many of our neighborhoods have turned to multi-unit houses, things that were raising families in 50 years ago are now duplexes and threeplexes and fourplexes, and that's not what this particular demographic is looking for. They're looking for their first home. Yeah. Uh, I didn't well, hear any and, price put to it. And but, they're uh, looking for upscale uh, rentals with different yeah. amenities. My and the other brother, thing that played yeah. a role is the schools played a bigger role in this, uh, the quality of schools. And I think, uh, having talked to the hospital myself, uh, the school, why many of our doctors are moving to Williamstown versus Bennington is one, housing, but also for the, what they perceive as better schools down there. So, I mean, there's a, a, it's a, there's a tie to two of them here, I guess. But again, I. Uh, I'm sensing this is going to save our planning commission some time. It's going to give us some other data to review when we review the town plan this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I met RAC only is I'd like to see what they have done for their analysis. Sure. And yes, there are other major landlords for sure. Yep. We have a list of who they are uh, that we ought to include them and get their comments I, on And it. I have talked with uh, John Broderick about this, and he's on board as okay. well. Greg? Um, I've come in away from uh, Dr. Mullen's uh, talk the other night. Um, 
what he was talking about was similar to this. I'm assuming if this is all in working in cahoots with that, is working backwards from what salaries are, what positions exist in town, to what the demand would be for housing for future development. So someone looking to do development in the residential zone would know what the market uh, is is demanding. But also there was there was a piece on the radio I heard the other day while driving about. Um, the, the real estate industry is talking about dramatic changes in what people are going to be looking for in homes as the baby boomers are retiring. Um, the houses that we identified as, as, you know, attractive homes in the past may not be the same thing as far as, you know, infrastructure, uh, you know, informational technology that, that people are looking for in their homes too. So the, the complexion of a home being built may be completely different than what we grew up in traditionally. So. Um, you know, I, th I, I think it's good information to, to gather as we go forward because there's, I mean, you can see different periods in this town. I live in one of those um, Montgomery Ward kit houses that was popular in the late 20s and early 30s. And then, you know, there's the, the 1950s structures in the 60s where you see, you know, the ranch houses and capes and things like that. There's obviously different periods. So it'd be interesting to try and get a look at what the, the next generation of house is going to well, and I think, and I think the interesting piece about this compared to maybe some other studies is the hope is to come out of this with some uh, really solid recommendations. And you can see where we broke it into, into a two-year process, where after the first year, we could come out with some preliminary pieces. And if we were able to go back and get a second grant uh, for the second year, um, then we could dig a little deeper into those recommendations and maybe put together action plans and work plans for those. So. Okay. Uh, is this gonna, is this, go ahead. Once you identify a need, is there going to be specific recommendations to how to fill it because it's coming from this study because it's, you know, it's obviously one thing to know what we're lacking. Yeah. But if we don't have a way to fix it. Yeah. I think it, it will allow us to say what are the, are there uh, quick wins or low hanging fruit that's out there that we can maybe do on our own? But also, um, is it something that is maybe, you know, high impact but high cost as well? And that's where we have to turn to our town plan and kind of our strategy for the next three to five years or something like that or even more to say how are we going to address this, this need over this need. Um, so I think my hope is that the whole range will come out of there. Things that we can be doing right off the bat that uh, have a big impact but don't cost a lot. And then there will be those that will have to certainly take a lot more time and thought to go into them. Well, the other thing is, you know, we've got a lot of great builders in our town, mm -hmm. okay? They're not working right now. I, but I, I don't think we've taken off, taken out an awful lot of uh, building permits for single family housing here this past year or so. If I recall, it's a very low number. Yeah. But this might give them, you know, the, the economy, if it turns, or if they've got a little bit of money, I think it would help them decide what price range are they going to go in and, and build for a house with some hope of having it off the market at some point in time. So and it can from, be useful to some of our folks and affects our, affects our economy. And from an economic development builders. standpoint, the ability to yeah. to go to a developer and say, we've got this parcel or property and, uh, you know, right. we'd like to look at what opportunities are out there to have hard numbers allows okay. us to, to do that. Except for the signature page, this is all marked draft. Yes. Is there a final you want us to consider signing? Uh, well, I only need the, the resolution signed. The, the final, I just put draft because it's not due till the end of this week. Okay. So my hope is to submit something Wednesday. You have a Thursday. resolution for us? Uh, I have it. You okay. have it. Mr. Okay, Chair, the board, the are you, uh, the feelings of the board, you want to go forward with this thing? Yep, yep. let's support it. Okay, uh, let's put it on a vote because it is money. Okay, move that we... Well, I thought there was no money attached to this, and we said there isn't money. Well, there's 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 eight thousand dollars requested. Yeah, right. Not our money. It's right. not our it's money, money, but there's money no, attached no. to it that we're responsible for. I don't no, understand what you're saying. Okay, go ahead. So I move that we accept the uh, resolution and the the grant application for housing for the okay. future. I'll second that. You second. Any further discussion? All in favor? And that's unanimous. Stewart, you can pass the resolution. Around. Okay, Michael, I think you're still on uh, the hot seat. I am. Update on community development loan program. <laughs> yep. And just and before you get started, and if I'm wrong, select board members can tell me, but uh, I don't want to see any names mentioned in your discussion on these. You can just general, okay? Yep. That, not a problem. Um, at the last meeting, uh, Justin had requested uh, to come back in a month with an update. So we're at that month mark. All I wanted to show you was here's what we've identified 
takes those loans that we had looked at that were uh, charged off or written off. Uh, Justin and the board um, had recommended just reaching back out to those people, seeing where we were at. The ones that are highlighted in red are people who have entered into uh, bankruptcy. And I have uh, calls into those uh, bankruptcy representatives that uh, handled their case just to see where we left off of those. But I do have paperwork in the file that indicates uh, they've gone through bankruptcy. Uh, the others you can see in the notation uh, where we've sent out a letter that was approved by the town's legal counsel uh, identifying that even though this loan was written off, the amount is still due uh, and that uh, moving forward on that, um, you know, we, would, we would look to additional action if uh, we didn't hear back from them. You can see where um, two specifically uh, have uh, at least reached out uh, and there's conversations going on. We have one that's undeliverable. Uh, two, that we haven't received word back as to whether they signed for the certified letter, and two, that have signed for the certified letter. Uh, so that's where we're at in the process. There's not necessarily a decision or action that has to come out of this. I just wanted to give you an update. Wilson, that answered your mail for you, what you wanted? Yes, yes, it does, Michael. Thank you. And yep. just undeliverable, that means a certified letter was sent. It came back, said it was not the right address and the not the right person. And we actually have sent that letter uh, twice to two different locations that we were aware of. And the other both. folks that where it says, I'm sorry, explain to me. So that one came back undeliverable and, the, and there's a couple other people that. The one that are none, we just haven't received certification back that it was either signed for or wasn't signed so for. So we'll keep trying to contact yep. the people that we can't, we haven't gotten to there. Yep. Yeah, and I'll still continue to work on those that are I have bankruptcy information for just to confirm that uh, those are closed and um, either we are on the list to receive payback in a certain order or we're sure. not and where we stand okay. with those. Other thank board you. members? Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Michael. Yeah, no. Stuart manager's report. Uh, I handed out at the beginning of the meeting uh, an email I received on the Hunt Street Bridge or the Benmont Avenue Bridge. Uh, and, and basically, they're, the engineer in charge uh, of the project uh, is noting for us uh, how they, they will attempt or not attempt to, to handle pedestrians when the bridge is ultimately under construction. And they are suggesting that we use the footbridge on Hunt Street uh, and direct pedestrians to use the footbridge rather than try to cross the Hunt Street Bridge, which will be closed to pedestrians. Uh, we, we will uh, attempt to do that uh, with line striping. Uh, we don't intend to add any additional lighting down through there. Um, and obviously notice will go out once we understand when the project will go forward. Uh, the second issue uh, that they ask uh, us if we have any comment on is, is the one having to do with uh, Gardner Auto Sales. Uh, there are apparently two curb cuts there. One is the main entrance to Gardner's. The other is a grassed area just off the bridge that probably was at one time used as an entrance. It remains a curb cut, but it doesn't appear to have been used in years. And I don't know whether the board wants, uh, wants me to reach out to Gary and, and uh, talk with him a little bit about this. Obviously, the state's concerned that uh, if he wishes to keep that curb cut, it's going to uh, interfere perhaps with the uh, configured approach to the bridge itself uh, that the state is working on. And then the last issue is uh, Fairpoint has expressed a desire to run the wires or its, its communications network overhead. Um, I don't think that presents a huge problem for us. Uh, major high tension lines run across the Roaring Branch uh, east of the uh, Park Street Bridge right now. Um, it may be an aesthetic issue that we want to take take a look at or have the DRB take a look at as we move forward in the project. We run down around Silk Road also. Yes. There's, there's a station there, substation there, and everything else. Yeah. Um, when Stuart brought this up Tuesday, we talked about it, I went and looked. I didn't realize that Gardner's had two curb cuts. Uh, if you look, you can see where the 45 degree angles at each end are still there in concrete, but it's all grassed in between them right now, right by the bridge. Uh, yeah, I would suggest talk to Gary, but 
you know, it seems to me he's always tight for space to park his vehicles. He's probably got four or five parked in that curb cut right now uh, along the bridge. So uh, other board members uh, want to weigh in on this thing on the curb cut piece? Well, you know, space being at a premium, he, he may need that curb cut to move cars in and out on the lot yep. for his business. But he, I don't think he uses it. I, I, you know, I yeah. Yeah, should see what he had to say. I think, yeah, let's, I, I think we got to talk to him. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah. a, he's a business owner. You know. yeah. That's what we'll do. That was really the only reason for bringing it here is they, they, they directed uh, these questions to the town, and I will certainly get a hold of Gary and chat with him about it. Okay. Um, just a quick announcement. The Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day is set for Saturday, October 13th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the transfer station. And commercial businesses, if you wish to bring materials to the uh, collection day, you need to contact my office. Uh, we, in the past, have been accepting some commercial waste from small quantity generators. Uh, but in truth, we should be charging them for that disposal. It's not necessarily free for commercial, it's free for households. So please, uh, if you intend to participate as a commercial small quantity generator, please contact my office prior to the collection day. Uh, otherwise, we will simply bill you for the amount of material you bring in. And then the last part was, uh, Joe, you and I had talked about whether or not uh, uh, Dan wanted to give us a brief update on the economic development strategy planning session. It appears that many of the board members or some of the board members attended the session, and that may be redundant. Uh, so I leave that to you. Dan, I, I think just uh, for those who missed it, and I, I think a lot of people, I think, watch it on TV because I've received a lot of phone calls, but you just want to kind of hit, obviously Dr. Mullins, his corporation, his company, his LLC has got the responsibility, but where does he go next, the next step? And by the way, that, uh, that show is still showing on CAT TV <laughs> for those who haven't seen it. Just for everybody, um, moving forward, we're kind of hitting now the meat of the project. Um, BCRC will be working with Dr. Mullen and his associates to um, develop with the steering committee three or four distinct goals. Those are going to be circulated widely, including through the select board. And as you know, two, two members of the select board do serve on that steering committee uh, to get feedback on that um, particular part of the project. There will then be a, a draft um, strategy developed. That will also be widely disseminated, and we hope that everybody will comment on it uh, as we move forward to try to to, um, to get a final um, draft of the strategy as well as an implementation plan with specific action steps um, that we hope to have completed by January of 2013. So three or four kind of big steps going forward, you folks and anybody, any of the organizations that are, are participating in the study will, will have wide dissemination to their membership, includes the chamber, BCIC, BCRC, uh, BBC, we try to do a broad outreach to the hospital, the education system, the colleges, all those folks. We hope to get a broad um, spectrum of input on the project as it moves forward. I enjoyed his presentation. I, I enjoyed the hour I spent with him before. But I just want to instill in him we do not have a strip in Bennington. All right. <laughs> Other business, uh, Chris? No, sir. <clears throat> Justin. Yeah, I've got one thing. I just kind of spurred my mind here. I see we have a thank you note for the town's allocation uh, for the uh, nonprofit from a nonprofit organization for last year budget time. And I know last year budget time we started having the discussion of whether or not we should have um, we should change our policy and have nonprofits go back out and uh, get the required 500 signatures. Um, I think if we should probably have that discussion coming up soon if we're going to do that. Uh, I think it's a, the organization the time to actually get it, you know, go and get the signatures they need if we're going to require that. Uh, so do you think we could get that on the agenda for uh, the uh, next meeting to have? Well, listen, folks, I'll, I'll just say now, I will not he be here for the next meeting. Uh, but could, Stuart, could you put the current policy in our packet the next time? And can we put on a schedule for uh, what's the second meeting? In, in October, what's the date? Mm -hmm. You got a calendar, but oh, whatever it is, the second meeting, second meeting in October. Yeah, I, I do want to be part of that discussion, folks. And unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town. Um, but yeah, I think it's time. I think yeah, doing it in October is not too late. No, uh, that's fine. No, but let's get the current policy in our packet. Let's look at it, make sure we're familiar with it. 
And uh, I, I would suggest, uh, uh, I know in my case, I'll go around and talk to some of those recipients and, and take a look and see what, uh, how they feel about it so we can hear all sides of it, okay? That's it? That's all I have. Jim? Good. Jason? No. Greg? Uh, yeah, two quick things. Um, one, I've had a lot of questions about the Union Street um, development. Uh, people have asked me, what about the uh, lights, light poles going in there? I checked with Dan on that. Uh, it was not part of the grant. If that was one, of, if you're one of the people questioning that, uh, the the wires would have to be buried for that to happen, and there wasn't uh, appropriate financing for that. So that's why there are not light poles going in in the industry development. But that project is well underway. Um, second thing, I have a question uh, for Stuart: um, recycling electronics. What is our facility at this point? Our facility is one of the facilities designated to take most electronics for free. There is no cost. Uh, we have a list that we distribute from the, from the uh, town offices to people. Not all electronics are, are recyclable at no cost, but most of your big ticket items are. Your monitors, your, your CPUs, your uh, televisions, uh, all of those kinds of things. Uh, in fact, I took a television up there today and it was able to deposit it for free. So we do collect them for free. It's part of a, uh, we were part of the, uh, response to the law passed by the legislature uh, a couple of years ago. Introduced by me. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's taken at the transfer stage? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It, it is a good program. I'm told it's working pretty well. And I hear a lot of people getting rid of their stuff. Yeah. It, it, quite a bit there today. Sure. Yeah. I have nothing. Uh, I just want to publicly recognize and thank everyone that worked on the car show. In my memory, that's probably the best coming together of weather vendors and participants that I've seen in my history. And I haven't go back 40 some years with the car show for the last 20. So Joanne, uh, pass on, I know you will, but you already have some, but pass on to your membership. Another great job. Um, I think that the uh, activity coordinated with the BBC for the show downtown, that went over well from what I understand from, from vendors, uh, or from our own merchants that people did visit. And uh, another good job by uh, cooperation by everybody in town to make that happen. Uh, Stuart, uh, I think I heard that who owns the generator that was at uh, that was at uh, middle school? Uh, Mount Anthony does. Okay, I heard that they BSD agreed to accept that. Is that true? That is true. And they are agreed to work with us to make Ben L the evacuation center for this side of town. That's correct. Okay. Now, th there, is, there is a conflict because Shaftesbury has also agreed to accept the generator <laughs> at, their, at their school. Uh, so uh, Rick Pembroke, the business manager uh, for SVSU and working uh, with, his, uh, with the folks at Mount Anthony, they, they've got to take a look and, and I guess Rick is going to be looking at what, which opportunity provides the greater good and they that's, will donate. That's obvious. Well, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, and uh, and Paul is going to continue to work with uh, that at yes. some point in time. If, if, they, if, if in fact BSD does take the generator and they will pay to install it, uh, we will then amend our emergency response plan to include BSDs as a secondary shelter uh, under uh, to be operated and maintained by Red Cross in times of emergency. Great. Okay, and that's all I have. Uh, I do have need for we do have need for executive session for personnel contracts and contracts. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. And a second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you, folks, for coming. Come here. You're going to write a story.